Um, I know that there's an awful lot of talk about disclosure. I know that in the exopolitics community there's a great deal of talk about disclosure. I personally don't believe the United States government's ever going to admit it. It'll probably come from another country, India or China, first. Or the extraterrestrials themselves are going to show themselves and just say, hey, the charade's gone on long enough, which is probably, which is probably the highest probability at this point. In talking about solving the problems, at the very top of our power structure, the planet Earth lives in a pyramidal power structure. Extraterrestrial civilizations no longer use that power structure, the pyramidal power structure. They have been using a holographic ever since the end of the Orion Wars, okay? in, in, which would be in our linear time about 360,000 years ago. Since then, most of the civilized benevolent civilizations, including some of the rogue regressive groups, and they are a minority, have been using a holographic social structure. And we're going to talk about that today. Okay? Um, we're also going to talk about creating a new domain of knowing, a space in which we can create an opportunity for Earth to be mentored because we, we need some help here. We are a little bit in over our heads, okay? So, it, it takes me a little while to warm up here. I, <laughs> I'm a little rusty. Um, as of the last several days, much of the Cassini project has been classified. The reason for that is because of all the mothership activity that has now been filmed and documented in the Saturian system around Saturn. Um, we also have a, a million and a half miles off of the South Pole a 20 mile craft that has sat in a stationary. Um, NASA and other organizations, telescopes have been monitoring it for eight months. They watched its trajectory to us. It is now stationary and there are craft going in and out of this 20 mile structure. I don't know any more about it than that. I also want you to know that there is a very large planetary structure coming in 18 degrees right ascension of Neptune's orbit. It'll, it should be visible sometime in the next year. There is an awful lot going on and of course you're all paying the bills and no one's being told anything about it. Now, it goes far deeper than spooking the herd. That is really not the intention here at all. Okay, the intention here and what's really been going on is, is simply this. Bob Dean made uh, a reference yesterday to almost feeling sorry for the government about the situation that they're in. Um, I, I would have to concur with him on that, in the fact that uh, the government made some treaties, uh, cut some deals for technology uh, in exchange for experimentation and observation, and they were tricked. They really did not know what they were getting themselves into. And now the hand has been dealt. Uh, there are many people within the UFO community that say that all the extraterrestrials are benevolent. Ladies and gentlemen, it is in my own personal opinion and based on the knowledge that I have that that is completely irresponsible to say. We live in a duality. <clears throat> because if it was all love and light, we would not be going down this road to global fascism and the powers that be wanting to eliminate two-thirds of the world's population. That is not love and light. Okay? So. We have, we have a lot of things to cover, um, and a lot of things are going to be occurring. The economic situation is what it is. Uh, Mr. Green gave a fantastic presentation yesterday. There is absolutely nothing that I disagree with him about. Um, he made a reference to buying gold and silver. I think that's a really good idea. However, you cannot eat gold and silver. 
it is imperative that you start storing food, and I will tell you simply why. If they do crash the dollar, which they are going to do, in order to create a global currency and a global government, um, you won't be able to buy food. He made reference to the currency being devalued six to one in the next several months. Gasoline will go to eighteen twenty dollars a gallon. Truckers will not be able to deliver product. What you have is what you'll have. Okay? It is imperative to, if you can, start forming within your community, community gardens, figuring it out. You need to start talking about this. I know most people are simply not open to it. Just do the best you can. I mean, we're all, we're all fighting the fight. Now, America is on the front line of this. And the reason is simple. America created a new domain of knowing. America was created to get rid of the aristocracy of the old world, to create something new, to create individual liberties, to create personal freedoms. That was never known in the world before. And we have that. And because of our apathy, we have lost virtually all of those. And it is no one else's fault. It is our own fault. We have known since the 60s that the CIA has been trafficking nar narcotics. We know this. We have known that the CIA has been assassinating and overthrowing governments. We have known that there's been a cover-up of what there is on the moon and inside our solar system. We know this. We know that there is extraterrestrial life. We know this. That is no longer the discussion. We know that the government has become corrupt. Okay? These, the people, the personages that rule the planet are not us. They are not human beings. And I will say this with my very last breath. They are not us. Okay? <clears throat> now, what happened was that they took over because they think holographically. It was very easy to get around the pyramidal, corp, uh, the pyramidal power structure on Earth because it's completely obsolete everywhere else out there. So if you come in using a holograph, using holographic technology, not technology, but thinking, what you do is you create your structure everywhere so no matter what happens, whether one group gets taken out, another group takes out, is gone, the other components are still there to rise up and still manage and control because each of these components have a picture of the whole and they have all the technology and everything they need to continue to control and dominate and brainwash. Okay? We're over our heads here, but we're not alone. Now, what happened was they took over. It was very easy to take over the governments. You dangle technology, you dangle knowledge, you dangle ancient history, and you give them this technology in secret. Okay? You have it. We're going to give it to you. The United States of America made this mistake. So, uh, Bob Dean, again, Mr. Dean made a reference yesterday to the missing trillions of dollars from the Federal Reserve. Okay, I have been told that it's $24 trillion is what they carry on their books. And uh, virtually most of that has gone into the secret space program and the colonization of our solar system. You can choose to believe that or not. It doesn't matter, and it doesn't change the reality of it. Okay? So what happened was the pirates took over the ship. Okay? The governments, realizing that they had all this technology and that they were a thousand years more advanced than we were, instead of telling everyone, hey, we have a problem here, and standing tall and doing the right thing, they joined the pirates. We are literally only now, as passengers on the ship, finding out and realizing that we've been hijacked. Okay? That's the movement. And many people are going to have a very difficult time when they realize that reality is not at all what they think it is or what they thought it was. Even those of us who have been exposed to this for many, many years have oh shit moments. I, it's impossible not to. 
you know? Yes, our politicians sold out. Um, it was easy to corrupt them. We, we, have, we have an enormous mess. They're stuck in the middle as well. Over the next year, year and a half, there's going to be so many changes. America is the focal point here uh, of this, and the reason for that is because Americans, despite our educational system, are still very smart. We are very able to think out of the box. We are excellent problem solvers, and we are armed to the teeth. They constantly will have to be looking over their shoulder unless they take us out. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the goal. They cannot have a new world go go they cannot have a world government without taking out the US. And I mean taking it to its knees. Now this is not the portion this is not where the whole presentation is going, but it's important to give you this background. Because the world used to look to us for the ideals of freedom. Immigrants all over the world have come to America. My grandparents were immigrants to this country because they believed in individual liberties. They believed in freedom. They believed in the principles that were in the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights. And ladies and gentlemen, that is who we are. We are not the crap that they show you on television. Gentlemen, you are not. <clears throat> Gentlemen, you are not the weak-kneed, sissy morons they try to portray us on television either. You are strong, you are family-oriented, you have faith, and you are warriors. And you're going to need to take a stand and defend your country and your family. Make no mistake about it. The two gentlemen that were here talking about the super soldiers, yeah, they're here. They're definitely here. They're hybrids. They're here. Okay? And there's more that's been going on. Um, I was hoping that one of them would talk about what happened in Dulce, New Mexico. Um, but they did not. And I don't necessarily want to go there either because, oh, God, it's sick. It's sick. Okay? <clears throat> no, I, I, I'm, I'm, there, there's other things to cover. But... Um, I, I bring it up because many people in, that have the knowledge, that have been in black ops, special ops, that have been involved in the ET component, know about that small rogue group. And they're not gone yet. Some of them are still here. All right? And they still create and wreak havoc. Um, I also want to tell you, and I have been asked to share this with you, about the vaccine, the new swine flu vaccine. Morinay has told me to tell you, or everyone, that this vaccine will permanently damage your DNA. So, whatever else comes out of that, it will permanently damage your DNA. Now, many of us in the community and in the world as a whole, we can't even agree on what the problem is. And because of that, we will never even agree on a solution. So it's imperative that open dialogue uh, continue to occur. And I know that for those, of, uh, those who have been in the exopolitics, that's what I'm basically calling the UFO community, exopolitics now, um, you've had a remarkable amount of patience. And your biggest tests are coming. Because as more and more of this information comes out, more and more people are going to want to ask you, who they thought were crazy, what the hell's going on? They're going to want to know. And you're going to have to try, in a very calm manner, explain it to them. Even though you yourselves are going to have all the butterflies, you're going to be wondering, how the hell am I going to even deal with this? because you have some background information. Now, this ET component is really about us. It is our destiny to travel the stars. It is our destiny to continue to move out 
in colonized space, especially our own solar system. It is not our destiny to be killed by vaccines in war. You will have to make those choices. My choices are already made. Okay? My decisions are clear. I am the father of five children. There is no way I'm going to back down and I'm going to sell them into slavery. Never going to happen. Okay? You need to make your own choices. Okay. I once asked Phaseus, one of the Andromedans, who has since crossed over, what was to become of us? Some of this may be a, a review for some of you. What was to become of us? Who, what was going to happen to our race, to our civilization? And he just, he just looked at me and he said, this is how we see you. Responsible freedom of self-determination becoming truly self-confident and free, to unconditionally be responsible for oneself without being coerced to accept some higher authority. In our galaxy, the more advanced the civilizations have become in the center of the galaxy, the riffraff had to start moving out to the outskirts of the galaxy. The riffraff. It's just like Star Wars. Okay? We are in the boonies. And that's why we have some riffraff here. We're not the only uh, planetary race that is having problems with the riffraff. Okay? But what's unique about us is that genetically we are considered to the Andromedan race genetic royalty and I have been saying this since day one we are extremely unique and it's because of that uniqueness we have enormous strength we have enormous capacity for emotions we have enormous intent and drive to not only to survive, but to create. What we lack is faith in ourselves. At the end of World War II, well, I mean, let me put it another way. The Nazis didn't lose the war. Okay? Germany lost the war, but the Nazis were brought here and to Russia. Okay? Now, the mind technology, the mind control, the space technology, the reverse engineering, the technology that they had been given prior to the war by a small group of extraterrestrials from the star system of Aldebaran was brought here and honed and polished and combined with other technology that the Zeta Twos, the Dows, uh, what many folks know as the Greys, all those began to complement each other. Remarkable technology. Technology we absolutely need here. I mean, the combustion engine has been obsolete for 70 years. I understand that India also is now going to experiment on wireless electricity. Hell, Tesla did that in 1902 in Colorado Springs. We know it works. Okay, but those that were funding his experiment asked him, where's the meter? And he said, well, there is none. It's free. They shut it down. Okay? The question is, well, we'll get to that. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around here. The question, the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, what kind of country do you want to live in? What kind of world do you want to live in? Clearly what we're doing now doesn't work. It has run its course. We have a government that has a lot of problems. We have corruption within it, not all of it, but we clearly have corruption within it. They have sold out and have been totally compromised. They themselves don't know what to do. And, if, if, and their only solution is to turn the power of the military 
and the power of the pharmaceutical company against the American people. That's their solution. That is not okay. That's not okay. It's time for um, the UFO, the Exopolitics Committee, to start creating another domain of knowing. And that domain of knowing is two things. What does a holographic social structure look like? How can we live with a holographic social structure mirrored after some of the principles that our founding fathers laid, but it wasn't perfect? What could we do now? And we're not just talking about the United States. This has to be a global thing. This has to be a global movement. What does that look like? So we need to create and start groups, dialogues, talking about living in a holographic structure where all the information that is available, black op, secret, top secret, above top secret, is available to everyone. But we could just start with the information that we do have. The rest of it will come. It's going to collapse on itself because it's no good. It cannot stand on its own. And the minute we turn our focus away from them and they can't feed off our fear, it will collapse in a heartbeat because where focus goes, energy flows. Okay? As long as they keep you looking at it, they are using the energy of your soul, of your spirit, to feed this monstrosity. It's time to just ignore them. Turn your focus away and let's create what we really, really want. But we have to decide what that is. Along with that, I have been asked to start asking people to talk to people, you're the first to hear this, about what would it look like for you, for Earth, and we'll start with the exopolitics uh, community, what would it look like for you to be mentored by several benevolent extraterrestrial races? What would that look like? How can we, what would we need to do to establish not only that communication, but at the same time have us feel safe with checks and balances so that they can walk their talk and we have to walk our talk. Open mentorship is our destiny. It's going to happen anyway, but we cannot wait for the government to turn itself around. It can't because it's not in control. All right? It is not in control. So we have to turn our focus away from all that drama and figure out another way. Uh, what I want to do now is read to you um, what I was given way back when regarding creating a domain of knowing. This also came for Phraseus. Create another domain of knowing, communicating and being. In other words, the domain of calling forth or generating your intent needs to be more distinct. Your physics, as you call it, is a good example of this calling forth. There have been men on your planet who have called forth new domains of thinking that never existed before here. They invented it. They didn't fantasize it. They didn't pretend. They literally created this new context from what you now call physics. Your humanity is strong with this kind of example. No being, however, makes the distinction that this is what they are. I would like to give you an example. Your concept of human rights isn't so long ago, wasn't so long ago that no such thing existed on your planet. It just simply didn't exist. You, you Terrans did not have any rights. Only the kings and the priests had their rights. But most of you Terrans do not have any rights. So you and other Terrans created human rights from nothing. You created the domain that created not only the rights to call come forth, you created the language, and then you communicated it. And this communication that you gave had power because it was full of intent. It has the power not only to, re to represent and to invoke, but it also to literally bring it into being. This is what your races need to do 
in order to clearly know yourselves. Now, in talking about that, let's talk about religions for a moment. The pyramidal structure of our governments primarily have come out of ancient Rome. And Rome was essentially controlled by 13 families. Okay? Those 13 families still exist today. Um, many of the world's religions, though they, they've had a tremendous amount of value and have brought an enormous amount of comfort to many people in our history and in our present day. They focus on shame, guilt, sin, and control. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the trap. Okay? They don't focus on self-responsibility. They don't focus on life or respect. They, in fact, create more division than we have ever known. Now, did they start out that way? With the exception of the Roman Catholic Church? I'm just going to be blunt about it. Uh, no. But the powers that be are masters of infiltrating movements. And what they do, and I'll give you the best example I can give you, is that of a charitable foundation. A foundation is created using the power of the people and the monies, the resources of the people, to do something that is of a benefit to humanity. As it's moving and it begins to gain power, and it starts to spread and shift consciousness, awareness, the powers that be will walk in and say, hey, we really believe in what you're doing. And we're going to give you a $25 million grant to help you continue to do your work. But we want to put one of our members on the board just to make sure that the money is spent wisely. And then they do it again. And now you have a second board member. And now you have a third board member. And before you know it, that movement, that foundation, instead of going up and creating more consciousness, more awareness, is now heading the other way. Okay? And now they also control the wealth of that foundation. Okay? We have been thinking in a pyramidal structure, in a third density structure. They're in fourth density in holographic. We have to think the same way. And we have to be talking about how is it that we got ourselves into this. Now, this isn't a question of, well, uh, uh, it's essential that we put blame to the side for the moment. There's plenty of that, and there will be plenty of that. What we need is the knowledge. We need to know how these structures work so that we can create something different, something in total opposition to it. Because I can't imagine everybody's happy with the way things are. Okay? And this isn't just about the United States. This is about the global population. Because the extraterrestrial races don't see us as separate countries. They see us as one race. Okay? And we're all, we're all between a rock and a hard place, pretty much, okay? at the moment. Um, taking personal responsibility is huge, but it really is the first and the biggest step to achieving full consciousness. Okay? Um, I'm going to read you a quote that I found. It was, it's from a gentleman named Little Hawk. 
He's a Native American Indian with the Mohawk tribe. Take credit for your mistakes, not what you do good, because you're supposed to be doing good anyway. Okay? We've all made mistakes. We've all screwed up. Okay? But that's part of the learning process. Okay? If, if you had all knowledge and you were all seeing, you wouldn't need to be here. Okay? So, collectively and individually, we need to start looking at the world and saying, what has my contribution been? Now, I'm not talking about going out and trying to save the world. It's not about that at all. Okay? It's really about each one of us individually. It's about being the light. It's, it's about not feeling shame for our mistakes. It's about absolutely unlearning that you are not a sinner. That is such crap that I want to vomit every time I hear that. Okay, you are not a sinner. You are a spiritual being in a physical body. Or as George Green said, rent a wreck. I, I like that. That was really cute. Okay? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> look at the structure that is overlaying us. Governments of control and dominance, a monetary system that controls everything, corporations and banks that own the debt of every nation, which means literally they're in control because they have the debt. Okay? We have medical and pharmaceutical companies who have had cures for cancer and other diseases, okay, that now want to damage your DNA with untested vaccinations. Imagine how afraid they are of you. Can you just for a moment imagine how afraid of you they are? And now you've got to ask yourself the question, why are they afraid of you? Okay. Because we are awesome, awesome creator gods. We have the ability to create reality, to bring it forth, to call it forth. And they have done everything they can to continue to make sure that we believe we're powerless. This is why so many extraterrestrial races are coming here now. Okay? Because they know different. On some level, ladies and gentlemen, we consciously have called forth this drama. This is really about us. Okay, we have called this forth. Okay, this is really about us. It's not about them. And we need to step into our power here. We need to fully understand it's time for us to step into our power as a planetary race and not see the borders anymore. Now, I would not be that opposed to a global government if it was set up with a constitution like the U.S. Constitution and an absolute Bill of Rights. But even then, that's not a guarantee. Because if people don't defend those rights, if people don't defend their liberties, what good is it? We've just experienced that. Okay? We've just experienced that. And in 1913, when the Federal Reserve took over, that's when the train started going the other way. And here we are. A hundred trillion dollars in debt. An absolutely ridiculous number. Okay? It's probably higher. Who knows? Okay? Now, in creating our holographic model of a civilization or a uh, social structure, do we want to have a monetary system? Do we actually need a monetary system? Because we're the only ones that I'm aware of in our galaxy that still use a monetary system. Okay? In fact, many, many years ago, I had been asked by Maureen Avisayas to put together a short presentation on money. They already knew um, about it, but I did the best that I could. And when it was over, Visayas just looked at me and he goes, I don't understand. And I said, well, what do you not understand? He says, I don't understand why you have to pay to live on a planet you were born on. Okay? And ladies and gentlemen, that has haunted me ever since. 
And that little, that just that one little thing takes you completely out of the box. Okay? For the first time, you begin to think, well, geez, what would it look like not to have a currency? You know? Advanced civilizations, all their needs are taken care of. All of their standard day-to-day -day life needs are met by the government. No strings attached. And then you do donate your time and your expertise and your skills to do something you want that benefits the whole. Okay? Now, I'm not talking about communism either. It's something bigger than that. Okay? But, but we need some help in defining what that is. Now, we have a lot of really brilliant, intelligent people here, here and in the world. And I know other people around the world have been talking about similar things, creating a different society and maybe even a holographic society and what that looks like, a holographic power structure. So no matter what happens, it will totally always stand on its own. The Founding Fathers tried to do something like this when they created all the states as equal, in control, and separate from the government. That was pretty much their intent, whether they realized it or not. I also want you to know that we have a lot of help. We are getting a lot of help from the spiritual side as well as the dimensional side. And I'm not talking about just dimensional beings. I am talking about also extraterrestrials. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. The vision at Valley Forge of George Washington. I know that a lot of people on the net, if you've not researched it, I suggest that you do. Some say it's a hoax. It's not a hoax. I also want you to know that Thomas Jefferson, in his diaries, was out walking at his estate in Monticello, was trying to figure out the verbiage, the language, in regards to the Declaration of Independence, when he was met by a hooded man who he never really clearly saw, who gave him the conversation and the pieces that he needed to finish the Declaration of Independence. I also want you to know that in the Constitutional Hall, when everybody was bantering and going back and forth, and it looked like no one was going to sign the Declaration of Independence, up on the top railing of, of, of the hall, a man appeared out of nowhere and for 20 minutes gave an oration, an oration about how important this was not only to the United States and to the moment but to the entire world as a whole and as soon as everyone was as soon as he was done everybody rushed to the table and signed the declaration of independence Benjamin Franklin and the sergeant at arms went upstairs to try to talk to this man because they wanted to know who he was there were armed guards at every single door the armed guards swore no one went in no one went out so there is divine providence here, ladies and gentlemen. It is not a mistake that you live in this country. It is not a mistake that you are who you are. Enough is enough. It is time we step into our power. And very simple steps will do this. First, you have to make a decision. And the decision is no more bullshit. OK? No more bullshit. OK? America is the reason it is because we allowed it to happen by our apathy. Okay? We have elections. We know we're voting for the lesser of two evil. We know that, but we do it anyway. Okay? I also want you to know that the President of the United States is not in charge of our government. Okay? He's just not. I want you to know that there are 47 layers of top secret clearances above the President of the United States. 47 layers. You want to know your secret government? That's your secret government. He can't even get a clearance. He doesn't even know who to talk to to get a clearance to find out about this stuff. Okay? So, it is important that we turn our focus a little bit and we start creating something different. This is what the founders did. This is what many people have done throughout the world. Okay, the Renaissance was something exactly like this. Okay, they threw off Rome and they tried to do something different. Rome, uh, the, the church, the government of Rome, they threw it off and they tried to create something different. And it went for a while. Okay, mentoring. The conversation 
in the exopolitics community, in my personal opinion, is no longer do UFOs exist. It's completely irrelevant. Okay? We already know they do. Um, where do they come from? That has some validity. Is it metal? That doesn't have any validity. It doesn't matter. Okay? Um, what matters is, why are they here? And what can we do to learn from this experience? Now, the reason that most, that many of the extraterrestrial groups benevolent are not talking to the government is because they know they're compromised. I will tell you that there is, there has begun some mentoring off-world of our military. Off-world. It has begun. But that is such a small piece. What really needs to happen is we need to create a new domain of knowing and we need to call this information directly to ourselves. No more middleman. No more middlemen. Okay? They can't be trusted. We have to do it ourselves. Now, how do we go about that? I don't have all those pieces. The idea was to share it and plant the seed inside of all of you to, to start thinking about what does mentoring look like? What would it imagine, how would you imagine extraterrestrials coming down and saying, okay folks, uh, you have pollution. We can help you with that, but these are the steps you need to do. Here's the technology that already exists on your planet to do this. And here is how you need to use it responsibly. Again, self-responsibility. Um, food, the growing of food. Water. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the technology to have all the drinking water we want. Just build desalinization plants. We have all the water we need. But they won't spend a dime on any of that. Because if you don't have water, they have control over you. Okay, we have so much technology. We have free energy on the earth. Okay, Tesla did it in 1902. We know it exists. Okay? A hydrogen engine in a car was built in 1955 and did 110 laps at the Indianapolis 500 racetrack. The plans were bought by Gulf Western Oil and never seen from again. That's 1955. <laughs> okay, there's just so much. There's so much. Um, The law of consistency, which is what the Andromedans call their holographic civilization, is set up like this. Every child, whether they understand the knowledge or not, is given the latest and greatest technology uh, or knowledge, information, data as it, as it arrives. It starts at the youngest level. It doesn't start at the top and stay there, and then they decide, well, you know, we'll wait till they're 25 to tell them about it. That is not the same soul. We need the children to evolve a much, to advanced maturity a lot faster than they are. Yes, they're growing up pretty fast, but not to advanced maturity. Okay? Every single piece of information, every single tool that is available is available to everyone across the board. The children that graduate from high school and the or school in the Andromedan civilization are smarter than their parents. And no one has a problem with that because they inherit the society. They're the ones that continue to go out and expand the society and create the holographic pillars of their society. Okay? It is not. We, we are completely going backwards here. 
And if that isn't evident to everyone, I don't know what is. The law of consistency is that every truth is spoken. Everyone is forgiven. There is no monetary system. There is an absolute free health care system, but it has nothing to do with pharmaceuticals. It has to do with... <laughs> it has to do with color, light, and sound, which is what we are, even in our physicality. Color, light, and sound. It has to do uh, the advancement of the soul. We have a damaged DNA structure, so when we reincarnate, we do not always remember things. There are people who do great jobs doing past life regression, and people can pull some of those pieces. But to have cognizant memory when you come back into physicality is something we don't have presently. They have that because they don't have a damaged DNA structure. Can our DNA structures be repaired? According to them, absolutely yes. But we need to make some changes. We need to create the space for us to be free enough to explore those possibilities. We cannot do that with the power structure that's in existence today. So we need to create another domain of knowing. And that begins with yourself. The love that you withhold is the pain that you carry lifetime after lifetime. And it all begins with us, each one of us individually. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we work, start thinking, start talking about a mentoring relationship, what that looks like, how would we want to put it together, how would even go so far as to say, okay, here's where we want to do this. Here's how we want to do it. Who, who do we want present? Do we televise it to the masses? Everything, every detail, they absolutely will meet us halfway. They are not going to come in here and save us or rescue us from ourselves. They're not going to do it. If you, any of you are familiar with the Andromeda information, um, one of the things that I was first that was first shared with me when I was adult was became an adult was that in our galaxy tyranny showed up very unexpectedly and them and other races that are part of the Andromedan Council have have come back in time to this moment on our planet and the other star systems that are having problem with the pirates to this time period this shift in consciousness here is what flips it either way. They're going to intervene, and they have been intervening in very, very subtle ways because no one wants to live in tyranny, not now or in the future. No one does. So this is our moment. This is our moment as a humanity, as a race, to really decide, are we or are we not going to unite as one? Are we or are we not going to watch each other's back? Are we or are we not going to stop taking crap from bureaucracy? We have to make a decision, and that decision is upon you. And you're going to be forced very, very soon to make a decision. And, and I'm, you know, I'm not just talking to, to you folks here in the audience. I know that this is being streamed, and I know that these DVDs and things have a life of their own. I know that better than anybody. Okay? The time is now, and all it does is it, it starts with you, just to make a decision. Okay? To do something, to be radical. To be a rebel again. Most of us guys in this audience, we know what that's like. Being a rebel, we grew up shooting guns, chewing toast into the shape of a pistol, okay? Rescuing the damsel, excited about the next adventure. We know about that, you know? That's part of who we are. We are not domesticated lap dogs. We're just not, and I'm not gonna be. And I'm not talking about going out and causing crimes. I'm talking about defending yourself 
your liberties, your rights, your family, and your community. Okay, because nobody else is going to do it for you. In fact, they're all working against us. And even they don't realize what they're doing. They really don't. Because so much information is compartmentalized. They don't realize the big picture. But many people are waking up very, very quickly. And I know I'm preaching to the choir in that. But it's amazing to see uh, how many people are waking up and questioning everything. Okay? This is our moment. The next several years is our moment. And it really needs to begin now. 2012 is not the end of the world. is isn't going to happen. It's not our destiny. Okay? However, the Earth will be going through some transitions because we will be crossing the galactic plane. And the galactic plane has an intense magnetic gravitational field. There will be changes. It's inevitable. Mr. Green touched on some of that yesterday. Okay, and others have talked about this as well. Okay, it's going to happen. So you need to start thinking about where do I really want to be? Okay, if it's here, fine. Make the best of it. But create your space of independence. Don't take it for granted any longer. We can't. The whole world is looking at us. The Asians, the Europeans, they can't believe how stupid we are. <laughs> Gospel, they can't believe how stupid we are. They're like, what's wrong with the Americans? You know, I don't have an answer, do you? We watch TV. We watch TV. <laughs> um, what I'd like to do, because I did have some extra time, is I would really love to entertain some questions. Um, if that's all right. Easy ones. <laughs> OK. Uh, thank you, Alex. This is uh, excellent. And I want to address the mentoring suggestion, because I think it's, it's actually fascinating. I think that this, this is coming directly from the Andromedans yes, it is. that you're getting in, that you've been in contact with. And mentoring is an interesting way of putting it, okay? If you mentor somebody, you do not rule them. You do not tell them what to do. Okay? That's key. Mm -hmm. And nobody has even suggested this. I think it's fascinating. So what we have here is the notion that you can be in contact with beings that can help teach you. Now this is going on. This is going on. I'm aware of it. Camelot is aware of it. By God, we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for that. There is mentoring going on. But you do have to ask for that to happen. And you have to be as fully conscious in the process and as responsible and as a, have that ability. You cannot sit there and ask them to do for you. It's not what it's about. And so that's, I would love it if you would talk about, because you obviously have been mentored. So who better to teach us what that, what does that look like? How is the interaction with you? Just describe, and I know that you have maybe talked to some degree, but in, in your interactions, if you could discuss some of the, the ways they have mentored you to this point. Okay know that my mentoring has gone on with times that I have literally been kicking and screaming. Um, the biggest portion of the mentoring has really been why do I believe things? And what is it that I believe? So a lot of times the question will come, I, I will ask a question or I will have a perspective and they will immediately come back and say, well, why do you believe that? You know, what is, your, what is your process of believing that that's true? And, for example, religions. It was one of the biggest things I had when I was a kid. And it was an issue that, was, that my father brought up to me as well um, when I told him about this. The 
we have formed perceptions of reality that are not based in reality. They're only based on perception. Now, in accepting that perception as reality, what we do is re we, we reinforce that illusion. And that's what we have done on Earth, is we have reinforced the illusion about who we are. About our strengths, about our power, about how we're supposed to live on the Earth, about being stuck on the earth, about how we are supposed to raise our children. We have all, we have bought into these perceptions. The hardest things were to really look at myself. And this is really where the work is, and it's always with yourself. The most difficult work has probably been for me in the last five, six, seven years. Questions like, well, who am I? They don't answer it. They don't say, well, you're this and this and this. But what they do is they will guide, they have guided me to just, to, to what it is that I, who it is that I want to be. The first was understanding that you are not just a physicality. That's the first thing to grasp. You are not a physicality. And just like some of the speakers said yesterday, I believe it was Mr. Green who talked about you know, there is a soul and it's 22 grams. I think it, they've measured that, that in body weight. That is really who you are. And connecting to who that person really is, what that essence is all about, you begin to realize, oh my God, I am not at all who I thought I was. And, and I'm, I'm purposely being vague because I don't necessarily... want to tell you who I am, other than to say that the, who I am here on earth in this lifetime and the mistakes that I have made, on some level I knew better not to make those mistakes. Okay? But we do. We do. We experiment. We create. Uh, as far as the meaning of life, they would never tell me what that was exactly. All they would say it just is, you know, you are creating your own adventure. Okay? So again, the responsibility is on me. As far as um, mentoring, to want to talk and to speak, the idea was to just keep it very, very simple. To just share their perspectives and let the people do whatever they wanted with it. And it doesn't matter whether anyone believes it or not. People know truth. People know bullshit. Eventually it all comes to the surface. It has to. Because all of you are just like me. You all know, know better. You know what's real. It's just a question of detaching ourselves from our addiction to physicality. And that's what it is now. It's, it's become an addiction because the focus is on the physicality. We, we don't, we're not objective anymore. As a soul, when you have an out-of-body experience and you detach from your physical form, you are completely objective. You have a 360-degree peripheral view. Okay? And that's because you're objective. You're not addicted. You're not stuck in the body or addicted to the body. And that's the part that they have been working on with me the most. Is to, is to actually feel and know that essence of myself as much as possible. So when, I, when we talk about mentoring, the mentoring is to get us from where we are here to self-empowerment. That's what I'm talking about. Once we have achieved self-empowerment, and it won't take long, folks. It really won't take long. We will know exactly what to do because we are spiritual beings. We are eternal. There is no age to us. And that's just not, that's not a metaphysical blind. 
That is a reality. So the mentoring is to help us move out of our addiction to physicality into full power as spiritual beings. And it isn't full of dogma. It isn't any of that. It's all about introspection, voluntary introspection. That's, that's Thank you. what it is. Thank you. Uh, hi, Mr. Collier. Thanks for being here today. Um, I wanted to ask you something about something you mentioned in your interview before. You mentioned that uh, an ancient race called the Patal created human beings probably so long ago. I wondered if you could just elaborate on that because I always just wondered about it ever since you said it. Thanks. It is believed that an ancient race, some of them call them the founders, uh, other cultures call them the Patal, created not only the wormholes, but created most of the physicality in what we know as our universe. Because as they travel, they are finding civilizations and the ruins of civilizations far beyond anything that they, even they know. And we're talking 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th density space travelers who are traveling not only in, in moving in an art of our physicality and other physicalities, but even their own. The wormholes is the best example that I've been given. No one, no advanced space race has any idea how they were actually built, but we know that they exist. In fact, there are several that have snapped connecting our galaxy to some of the other nearby galaxies. They've snapped, and no one knows how to fix them because we don't even know how they were built. So. Hi, I'm Dan Bender, the one who's uh, working on the streaming, and um, I was asked by the um, streaming audience, which is now up to uh, 1,500 members uh, currently watching, and I think we've probably had over 10,000 have tuned in on this particular segment, and I picked... Uh, thank you. I've kind of picked uh, three quick questions, hopefully they're quick, uh, that uh, I was asked to pass on. They're randomly chosen, so they may not be the best ones we've got out there, but what the heck. Um, one of the first ones was, uh, what free energy devices do you know about? Um, one I know is magnetic. It's, it's uh, essentially was invented by a gentleman in Tennessee that was just a bit larger than a shoebox and it was uh, generated by mirror, uh, magnetics, and it had a, uh, an engine inside of it, and it spun. Once you started it, it would, power, it would power a home completely independent no matter where it was. And I understand that the gentleman and the technology vanished about eight years ago. He tried to get a patent on it, and that's when he basically went off the grid. Okay, next question. Because he demonstrated that technology. I just wanted to finish. Okay. He actually demonstrated that technology. Okay. And that he had made, began building that technology back in 1976. Second question I have is, can mentoring happen on the, on the Internet? Now, I have to admit, I wasn't completely paying attention to everything because I was so busy with everything on the Internet. But uh, I, I, I that's don't know. the question I have. That's a great question. I don't know. Okay. I, would, I wouldn't see why not. Okay, I guess we have to figure it out. Uh -huh. My little side jobs I've got to do. Anyway, uh, last question I have here so I can let some of the other folks get back in here. How do you deal with the greed issue? I don't have an answer for that. Okay. I, I, mean, it's, I mean, what is greed? That they'll never have enough? It's basically grounded in fear, I would think. Fear of loss, fear of abstinence, fear of not having enough, fear of loss. To me, that's what greed is. It's just a fear. Um, can it become an addiction? Apparently, it has. <laughs> um, but I, I personally don't have an answer for that. Well, thank you for the, from the Internet audience. Okay. Thank you. I just said you had mentioned about uh, possible coming changes, to, uh, like on a geological level. Um, to me, it seems so chance. Like I, I'd appreciate maybe some thoughts on uh, your thoughts on. Do we just trust our intuition as far as where to go, what to do, how to plan for something like that, or? Um, it seems a rather daunting thing to try to get your head around. 
Well, you know, change, change occurs all the time. And you do things intuitively all the time as well, whether you realize it or not. You might change the way you go home one day and do something different, and then when you get home you find out that right where you would have been there was a horrific car crash. That, in fact, just happened to my wife. And she did something completely out of the ordinary for her. And she would have been right there. So, you know, everybody has their guides. Everybody has their own intuition. Um, I'm not always the most intuitive at times either. But it's just, it, it's, 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 the only way I know to answer this is you just learn to trust yourself. Um, it could be that you'll be guided to go out of town when something happens. I don't have that answer. Or you will be right where you don't think you need to be, but you're going to be there for a very, very good reason. And out of it will come out a self-empowerment that you never would have had before. We all have our own paths, and we are all creating our own realities. And we all have our own personal agendas for learning and growing and becoming who we are. Your experience is going to be very different than mine. And I don't know how to, you know, to tell you. I mean, hey, if I had a hard date, but I never do, and I, I don't get a hard date, and I've made that mistake in the past about giving hard dates, when in fact they were probabilities. So the fact is, I don't know either, but you just have to trust that you will be exactly where you need to be when you need to be there. And I know that, you know, that's kind of a foo-foo, la -foo, la answer, but I, I don't, that's my own experience as well, you know, that I just have to pray and hope that, you know, have faith that I'll be exactly where I need to be. I appreciate that. That's pretty much how I, my take on it, and I just wanted to kind of see what your thoughts were on that, because to try to take it from a mental perspective and plan and get out maps, and <laughs> it seems a little absurd to me, and I, that's kind of... It, going it, the other direction in the in the tr trusting the flow of life. So I appreciate that. It, exactly. And, and personally, I wrestle with that all the time. I try to have backup plan to backup plan to backup plan to backup plan, and I spend all this energy doing this, and it goes completely a different direction. So. <laughs> I don't. Thank you so for being here. I just had a question. Um, when you mentioned the the thing about the forty seven levels of government, which is just the levels of, of security. Oh, the security. Yeah, that the president doesn't even know that he's not really in charge. Um, this happened 46 years ago, of course, but I was just wondering, what is your thoughts on the purpose of President Kennedy's assassination? I just was curious about that, if you had, you know, wondering. No, no, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. I just, ooh, man. Okay. I will, I will tell you my perspective on that. Eisenhower told Kennedy about 54. So Kennedy knew, and he told Bobby, obviously. One of the things that happened, and this has been documented through the great work that Dr. Stephen Greer has done with the Disclosure Project, is that most of the extraterrestrial knowledge and technology in exchange of technology went black three weeks after Eisenhower knew about it. So he didn't even know where it was. And this has been confirmed by one of his chief of staff, uh, a brigadier general. It's Langton, I believe it is. Langdon. So he shared all this with, with John Kennedy. And apparently where they felt the hub of the loss of of where this technology had gone and how far it went black was something called the Special Operations Coordinating Group, which is part of the National Security Council. And what's interesting to note is that the first thing John Kennedy did when he took office was sign a presidential directive abolishing the Special Operations Coordinating Group. Now, no one knows exactly who they are, uh, but they're not only connected to the intelligence, but also to all the black programs to the space, secret space program and everything else. There is some conjecture that these people are the governors of the Federal Reserve because they control the money and it's really all about the money. That's conjecture though. I don't know for a fact. 
But what's interesting to note is that they had connections everywhere to everything because all the intelligence from above would come to them and then they would decide which information the president was supposed to get. Again, those layers of security clearances. What's interesting to note is after the assassination, the very first thing Johnson did when he got back into the White House was recreate the Special Operations Coordinating Group, now known as Special Group in the National Security Council. That's my take on it. And I, that's, that's awesome. Um, and, but that time during the 60s, of course, there's like, you know, of course, like four more. Are they all like just kind of series of random events or are they all different, like, you know, King and Bobby and, you know, are they just all random occurrences of lone nuts? Like, you know, you know, James O'Reilly and all those guys and Surrey and Surrey, are they just a part of that whole thing? <laughs> I think that there are programs that overlap all the actions that occur in each country. Yes, there are some lone nuts or individuals that do things. But there's also at the same time an overwhelming amount of evidence that many people have been brainwashed and created to be hitters, uh, to go wet and take out people. So I don't know. But again, you know, let's go back to Operation Paperclip. A lot of the, the brainwashing and mind control technology that the Germans had been given was brought over here and they just continued operating, operating here under different names and with new passports. So it, it's a very big, and I don't know all the components, it's a very big question, but on the surface, does it look like it was done on purpose? I mean, look at the individuals who they were. They were making change. They were creating an awareness. They were behind a very powerful, or the, the, the focal point of a very powerful movement for change to make things happen for the betterment of everybody, okay? And that's, again, that is the pyramidal power structure. You lop off the head, loss of knowledge, it flounders. Somebody can come in, take control, and move it the other way. Then it doesn't exist. So, okay? Hello, sir. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. I First, I wanted to thank you for bringing up a subject that I feel is one of the most important things that we can talk about here at this conference. And uh, as far as I can tell, you're the first person to bring it up. Uh, it's the monetary system, the economic system that we predominantly use in this world. What my question is, is if you or the and, and or the Andromedans have any insight to offer as far as the transition that we'll need in order to transcend an economic system that posits us in a position of feeling like we need to compete with each other in order to survive, making us feel separated from each other instead of being one? That's a great question. And let me ask you that this back. What are your thoughts on it first? <laughs> Obviously, okay, you can tell how I worded this my is, question. This, this is about, mentoring is about self-empowerment. Right. Okay. What are your ideas on it first? You know, it's great to ask somebody for their advice when you don't have a clue what you want to do, okay? But that, that can wrongly or to your betterment influence you. But it's better for you to have some idea about where you stand and why you stand on a particular position or a, a reason to make a change than to have somebody tell you why. And that's what they want. They want us to come halfway. I very much agree with that point, as a matter of fact, and I do have a lot of my own opinions regarding how we can do it. I just felt that it was an important subject to bring back up, and I feel that personally it goes back to something that you said regarding uh, the creation of something that doesn't already exist on the world and never has before. And I feel that that's what we need in the form of uh, human interaction. We can do this. I mean, as souls, when we're not here on Earth, we've been in other civilizations that don't have a monetary system. We have this knowledge within us. We do know. We just don't have access to it at the moment. But we do know. All of us. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. I'm very inspired by your message. It's an honor for me. Thank you, and for us too. My question to you is, um, 
You spoke earlier about the whole thing of the domain of knowing and, you know, the intention that we have uh, together and how, you know, at one point there was not this whole human rights. So how can we come together as a group collectively in creating an intention for the world that we want to see? How can we, you know, all of us are asking what can we do? What can we all do to collectively share our intentions of the world that we want to see, the world that we want to create? They have their intention, but perhaps we need to collectively have ours and align together about the world we envision. And I'm wondering if you have any advice or counsel or mentorship about how we can unite in that way and gather our, our intentions to create the world we know to be true in our hearts, we know is possible for us to live in, that we remember. Well, that's the first step. Just talking with your friends, people of like mind, okay, just creating that vortex of, of knowledge, of harmonic, of frequency. And as you begin to talk more and more about it, your group grows. I'll give you an example, the best example that, that comes to mind is in Colorado, there were a group of women who um, were the wives of soldiers over in Iraq. And what they did was they formed something called the Kitchen Militia, <laughs> okay? Where they would all get together, not only share recipes and about rearing children, yada, 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 and sharing information and letters about their spouses over, overseas, but they would also start talking about different ideas. And some incredible ideas came out of the kitchen militia and, and several of them even started a companies of ideas that came out and now they're employing many of the people within the kitchen militia. So it's very simple steps and again it individually this doesn't I mean this has to be a grassroots and all it takes is a focus, a turn of our focus away from the drama and the crap that they want us to focus on on the news and CNN, etc., and start thinking about what is it that I want? What information do I want to know? What do I want to hear? Okay, what information do I want to hear on the news? What kind, of, what kind of neighborhood do I want to live in? Okay, what do I want to talk to my friends about? What's really important to me? And ladies and gentlemen, back in 1993, I was telling everybody to throw their televisions away. I really was. Um, you know, I told you so, okay? <laughs> I mean, we have one, uh, and we just watch movies, and we choose which movies we want. Um, I do have rabbit ears so that I can watch the election to find out who's going to screw us for the next four years, <laughs> okay? And that's, that's roughly it, and the Super Bowl, but now I can get that on the, online, so now I don't even have to plug in the rabbit ears. So, you know... You guys know this stuff. You know this stuff. You just have to want it. You just have to want it. You gotta want it so bad that you're willing to just do it and say, enough is enough. You do that with your kids. You do that with your neighbors. You do that with your bosses. Now you gotta do it about your life. What is it that you really want? Get some clear, distinct ideas about what it is you really want. Because the system we have now is crumbling, and it's going to continue to crumble. All the illusion in the world is not going to keep it standing because it's run its course. It's done. So we have to create something else. And we have to, because if we don't, the powers that be will create it for us. And I guarantee you, you will not be free. You won't be free. You won't like it at all. You won't. It's a given, absolute given, because it's all about them. It's not about you. And as Spock once said, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Next question. Alex, my name is David Farman. I represent Alien Shift, AlienShift.com. The page we made for you is between 250 pages. is one of the most visited. You are, Alien Shift is about new hope for humanity, and you are one of the, uh, uh, we could, call you the new hope for humanity. I want to thank you for all the stuff you've done. Basically, my question is, 
Uh, I'm sorry, you want to say something? It's not about me. Exactly. It's not about it's me. All, it's, all, it's all about us. And the question I have is about us, the public. Every, every ufologist, uh, past 30 years I've been watching, they write books and videos and they go home. There is no unity, there is no group uh, that can... Um, how can we create such a 40-man uh, international group that would have a leader like you, for instance, or whoever else want to take the position, and we, we have our voice with uh, uh, ET and with the people of the earth. Without, we, we, you guys are all waiting for governments. Don't do that. Don't do that. We are the governments between humanity and the ET. Do not wait for any governments to help you guys. Uh, hi, thanks for coming uh, today. We, we all appreciate that. Um, I guess a question I have is, is can you hear me? Can you hear me here? Can I, have yes. heard? I, I kind of have a profound question, or it's somewhat profound, I guess, which is to say, that um, on the one hand, I think that we all want to access knowledge and we want to know what's going on and that is empowering. On the other hand, it is also true that the more we know, to a certain extent, the more of a target we become. I think that that is just because of the fact, especially the way that we've had a lot of laws that have been passed in, in, you know, throughout the world to monitor what, what people are doing. And I think we all have to be cognizant of that. And I'm asking, what do you think? How can we access? We know that there's powers that are off planet. We know that the that the, the matrix itself or, or the higher the higher self is one of, of purity and strength. How do we access that in the in the face of the fact that we do put ourselves in, I don't know if it's at risk, but that we put ourselves in somewhat of a of a precarious position and that and that we're you know we're we're facing an, a very, very organized and very strong uh, union across the planet and, and how do we get there? How do we empower ourselves? That's what I guess I want to ask. Okay. Let's deal with the first thing you said. I want you to do me a favor, just for a moment. I want you to get down on your knees. No, let him, let him, give him the mic. Just get down on your knees. Okay. Okay, I want you to get down on your knees. Yeah, just like that. Look at me. I want you to look at me. Can you Not wanna, what I was expecting. But do you want to okay. live the rest of your life like that? Uh, no, not, not particularly. No. Okay, then stand up. <laughs> then stand up. Dude, your eternal soul, all I can do is take this away from you, and you still live. Okay? It's not who we are, it's what we are. As far as a, a, a forming an organization, it needs to be grassroots, because everything else that becomes a foundation or a corporation, they take over. If it's a grassroots, and everybody in this audience and every citizen around the world, if we start watching each other's back, there isn't jack that they can do to us. There just isn't. I got up because I wanted to assert that we are the ground crew. Oh. Sorry. I wanted to assert that we are the ground crew and that we are being mentored and, and find out if you disagree with that, that this is the choir and uh -huh. that, that we are being mentored already, uh -huh. whether we've been tapped on the shoulder by someone from another part of the galaxy or not. And um, that we should stop denying that we are already being mentored and we already are getting the message of what it is that we need to do. Well, I think George said it best yesterday, Mr. Green, we are extraterrestrials. <laughs> you know, we're just, we're just trying to reconnect the kin, basically, you know? Uh, so yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I don't have any, any problem with that. Uh, the reason for my purpose for reiterating it is knowing that these things go wherever they go and that there are so many people now coming into this, discovering it for the first time, or at least asking questions, and it's important to bring them on board as quickly as possible, to just have them to plant the seed, hey, on some level you are already being mentored spiritually, and we just need to bring the physicality and connect that to the spiritual essence of ourselves. Thank you. That was my purpose.
Uh, I was just wondering about the nature of the incoming object. You said what was the question? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little nervous here. Nobody uh, will bite you. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned an incoming object, like 22 degrees to Uranus or something? Um, 18 degrees right ascension of Neptune's orbit. Um, all I know is that it's, it's, it's a planetary, planet, planetary structure and it's friendly. It's not. But I, but I don't know anything more else about it at the moment. But I know it's friendly. That works. <laughs> okay, it's not Nibiru. I have a question, but as I was standing there, I had a realization. You were talking about the, um, the holographic um, kind of system that they've put in place and that you said that we need to implement that holographic system and when you said we need to become grassroots everything has to become grassroots I got I got it on a le uh, an extreme level that by continuing to share passionately with absolutely everyone that th that we are creating the holographic system that they can't destroy That's right. It's impossible. So, I really got it. Thank you. You're but my, very quest welcome. my question is you were mentioning um, that the Andromeda have the DNA to be able to remember past lives and that our DNA is damaged, so we cannot. Um, do you know of ways in which we can heal our DNA? And would accessing the blueprint of perfect health and healing in our higher self be part of that? It's a great question. I don't have the answer to that. Thank you. And I had to put my glasses on to see who I was talking okay. to. <laughs> okay, my take on the grassroots thing, and tell me if I'm right, is that even if we're not out talking, if you're doing your spiritual work, and in your mind you have a desire for a world that's peaceful and pure and good, without the hatefulness and the fear and you're creating that that that's the grassroots thing that there doesn't have to be an organization that's exactly right thank you you got it <laughs> now I just I, I, I want to make I want to I wanted to bring up something um, I've had been blessed to have an opportunity to spend some time in Europe and I was in Switzerland and uh, we had just come out of a pub and um, there were some young men um, g being arrested for some reason and I will never forget this as we're standing there watching this happen one of the young men said to the uh, Swiss police you didn't read me my rights and the cop stopped and he goes what rights he goes I got rights you gotta read me the Miranda Act and this is a Swiss student okay a Swiss, Swiss being, and he goes, this is Switzerland. You don't have any rights here. Okay? But this young man believed so much in that that he was willing to challenge the police officer about it. Okay? And it was a big surprise for him. So you see, the influence that the United States has had on the world is so more profound than any of us realize. And the disappointment is probably equal to that at this point. Okay? Because here we have, the propaganda has been communism, fascism. We have sent young men to war, lost their lives to fight communism and fascism, and in 60 years we become fascist? What's wrong with this picture? Okay? Sir, uh, two more questions and then I, I'm done. I wanted to preface this question with um, just saying again, as I spoke with you in private, it's an honor and a privilege to have you here with us, and thank you for speaking um, of what you know. And uh, I also wanted to say that I don't want this question to sound in any way hostile uh, to anyone, because it does come from the bottom of my heart, and it's something that has been bothering me for a long time. If, if we are to move forward and connect all the pieces of the puzzle and move forward into the holographic social structure that you're talking about where the children know more than the adults uh, and where all information is given to the young, um, 
then why is it that we still, even in disclosure movements and um, with courageous witness testimony coming forward, people speaking, that there are still certain topics that people are afraid to or will resist talking about, um, such as the Stargates that was mentioned earlier this morning um, and other things. So is your question exactly why there are still some topics people don't want to discuss? Right. In, in people who are just courageously stepping forward um, and risking their lives uh, to speak out about what they know, why is it that they w do not speak about everything that they do know and there are still topics that they wish not to speak about? Well, that's a great question. And I'm also guilty of that. Um, it's a comfort zone, it's a comfort level, and everything has its own timing. Um, what would happen to humanity if the government were to come clean about everything that's, that they know about everything that they know? Could humanity totally deal with it? Probably a, a portion of humanity could deal with it. The other portion, or portions, or groups could not maybe deal with it at least in the very beginning because they have constructed a reality around themselves that is based on perception that is an illusion. And to shatter that all in one, swell, one swoop is, can, be no, can be a disservice to them. The idea is to take people and give them the tools that they need so that they voluntarily begin the process of self-responsibility and voluntary introspection. The information is there and it's been out there for 50, 60 years. We'll take the UFO community as a whole, exopolitics. More and more people are coming into this. Who is the biggest group now? It's the young people, okay, which is promising. They are in fact influencing their parents by having discussions at home. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? So it doesn't matter how it happens as long as it happens. Now, I mentioned Dulce in our conversation earlier. There will be people, I'm sure, who will contact these two to really want to talk about that. And they're going to have to be very careful about how they present the information because the things that happen there are horrific, absolutely horrific. And they had to be dealt with, and they were dealt with. However, that element that was behind those atrocities still exists here, okay? And even I don't want to talk about that, okay? Because it involved women and children. And that's as far as I'll go. But now that I've mentioned it, I've created a domain of knowing, okay? I've just created a domain of knowing. Now each of you will start going out, thinking about that, doing some research, to pull that information to you, because now you want to know. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, last two questions. My question was actually about children and the disappearance of children, if you're willing to talk about it. <sighs> I've said so much about that already. Um, I know that I have been blasted about that, ladies and gentlemen. I absolutely know what I know about the missing children. And uh, I'm not going to apologize for it, and I stand by what I said all those years ago, and I stand by it today. Okay, could you summarize, because we're, we're aware of this as well, so if you could just, in maybe one sentence. We have become a natural resource, uh, very much how we've used cows. We use cows and other animals. We ourselves have become a natural resource. The younger ones are the most desirable because they're not tainted with uh, chemical poisons in their bodies because they're young. That's all I'm going to say. Laura Knight Jedsick, 
has gone into this in depth, and Rich Dolan has also written a review of her book that's very positive, and Rich has, and Alfred Weber published an article about the subject. So if you want to investigate it further, because it's actually, I just want to augment what, what Alex is saying here in the sense that the point is not to, di to give you everything out on a platter, okay? It's for you to understand what's going on. The point is to give you direction. What Alex is doing here is mentoring you, okay? He's giving you indications, and that's what our whistleblowers do, by the way. We do they don't tell you everything. They don't even tell us everything, but they give us the clues that we need to do the research necessary to find out the truth. And when you hit the truth, it gets you. You can tell. You know it. You want to be in denial, go right ahead. It's out there. The truth is out there. It is unbelievably out there. <laughs>